Hi, this is a recorded presentation for the Future Dams Annual Forum describing our work at Surrey focusing on a model of community-based water governance. I am Kavin Narasimhan. I am a postdoc at the University of Surrey and a research fellow in the Future Dams project. My colleagues and co-investigators in the Future Dams project are Dr. Corina elson Broich, Senior Lecturer in the Department of Sociology and Professor Nigel Gilbert, Director of the Centre for Research in Social Simulation and the Centre for the Evaluation of Complexity across the Nexus. Here's the background to our work. The one percentage accessible fresh water available on our blue planet, which is almost 70 percentage water, has to meet the water demand of 7.8 billion people. In our future dam case study regions, fresh water for agriculture has a significantly higher demand compared to other sectors. So governments, donors and private sector investors are keen to support irrigation development in these regions. In sub-Saharan Africa, decentralized water management is considered central to the irrigation expansion efforts. It is where arrangements for water provisioning and allocation is handled effectively within local communities with perhaps only occasional support from the state and donors. Water user associations or UAS in short are formal not-for-profit user-based organizations bringing together farmers for managing a common irrigation system. The process of withdrawing water management responsibilities from state agencies and devolving it to water users is often referred to as irrigation management transfer. Currently in Ghana, there is an administrative effort to transform all water user managed initiatives such as village committees and farmers unions to us. However, both the transformation process and the implementation of us is fraught with problems and hurdles. In theory, the expected feedback loop enabled by us is that increase in irrigation performance would increase agricultural productivity, which would enable cost recovery and in increased user participation. However, this is extremely difficult to achieve in practice due to several issues such as conflicts between water users, limited technical and financial potential for UAS to deal with operation and maintenance tasks and management of reservoirs, inputs and market conditions for crop production, and also because of wider issues related to political economies and rigid water bureaucracies. Against this backdrop, there is a recognized need to understand how UAS currently work and explore alternative management approaches which would make UAS work well for the users, for the state and the environment. We are developing a model called Watering, which stands for Water User Associations at the interface of Nexus Governance, intended as a tool to support the decision making of UA representatives dam owners, irrigation authorities, and other state actors. Watering simulates an irrigation scheme as a socio-ecological system, that is, an interlinked human and natural system where the flow and use of a critical resource, water in this case, is influenced by the features and characteristics of a natural system and a human society and the interactions between the two. Watering uses an agent-based modeling approach. Agents are farmers, herders, households, and worse. The natural environment is a simulated irrigation scheme with a simple topography where a nearly level surface with a slight slope, built infrastructure comprising of a reservoir and canal network and water flow by gravity are modeled. There is a social environment created by water users being members of UAS and participating in its activities. The system also has global drivers such as population and income distribution and climate data influencing crop water demand. Watering is a stylistic model, meaning empirical data is used to inform model design for calibration and validation, but the model itself is not a one-to-one -one representation of reality. The model runs in monthly time steps and each simulation is around 20 years. The watering model has five layers. There is an irrigation model, a catchment model, a crop model, a UA model and a water user model. For the irrigation model, we have drawn design inspiration from the Tono and VS schemes in the Upper East region of Ghana, which have reservoir-based gravity-fed irrigation systems. There is a main reservoir, 
a main irrigation canal, lateral canals and channels to farmers' plots. The simulation mimics the flow of water from the reservoir to the fields by gravity through the canal network. The catchment layer simulates a nearly level surface with a gentle slope to mimic the catchment area of an irrigation scheme. The landscape is tilted, so it's a downhill going from the north to the south, that is, from the top of the simulation window to the bottom. There is a moderate inclination in the east-west direction also to enable the flow of water from the secondary canals to farmers' plots through the channels by gravity. We plan to model irrigation losses through surface runoff using the simulated tilted landscape. The crop model simulates three stylized crops, dry crop, wet crop and a mixed crop. We can simulate three to four growth stages depending on the crop type such as planting, flowering, ripening and harvest stages. The total growing period for each crop and the growth period in each stage can be specified as model inputs. We have specified some default settings based on crops grown in Tono and Beer schemes. Lack of water through irrigation can have different effects on yield loss depending on the crop type and the growth stage. Model allows staggered planting for all crops. You can enable or disable the setting based on scheme features. Although water and ua accounting is done for each calendar year, cropping schedule can span across calendar years correlating with dry and wet seasons specific to each scheme. We have used the blaney criddle method for calculating the crop water need. We have designed and calibrated the crop model based on empirical data from Tono and BS schemes obtained through our Futuredams consortium and case study partners and inputs from the FAO irrigation manual and other relevant literature. There is one water user association agent in the model. It deals with the water allocation policy, collecting fees and fines, and undertaking operation and maintenance works. In terms of water allocation policy, the WA agent can determine what water allocation strategy to follow. Example, water could be spread equally or upstream users might be prioritized over downstream users, either intentionally or because of the scheme layout and infrastructure. In either case, there could be losses for some users compared to others. UA agent will also determine the watering rota, that is how many times per week, how many hours per day and at what discharge rate water is released to each lateral. UA adapts these decisions during the course of the simulation based on water availability affected by climate shocks. Water level in the simulated reservoir is either from observed data from Tono and VS schemes or simulated data using a cosine function mimicking high and low flows observed in the Tono and BS schemes. A potential addition we hope to add is where the UA agent learns which water allocation strategy works best for the majority of users in terms of minimizing yield loss over a period and opts for that strategy. This of course will change subject to water availability and climate shocks. So the UA would be adapting constantly. The UA agent collects membership fees from scheme members and fines from herders if their livestock destroys crops or the canal infrastructure. If there is a problem with the canal infrastructure, UA undertakes operation and maintenance works using its cash reserves. If there is a lack of funding, UA seeks help from an external actor such as the irrigation authority and might have some success in securing financial help. Lastly, we have the water user behavior model. There are farmer agents who choose to cooperate with their ua or defect. Cooperation means they would cultivate on the agreed area, pay fees regularly and participate in water user association meetings. Defect means they would cultivate on a larger than agreed area, use water from the scheme but not pay the fees. For now, the assumption is that most scheme farmers cooperate whereas independent farmers don't. This assumption might change to reflect new insights emerging from data collection. Scheme farmers are closer to the canal network, whereas independent farmers are downstream and further out from the canal. This was a design decision based on observations in Tono and VS schemes. Crop farmers may also own livestock, but the numbers are usually small, so their water consumption is accounted for in the model, but not charged separately. Herders, on the other hand, are agents who own large numbers of livestock and normally stay on the periphery of the scheme but occasionally livestock might stray into the scheme area, destroy crops and damage canals. Herders would have to pay fine to the UA as compensation towards any damages and crop loss. 
How quickly then a canal is fixed and eel loss is prevented after such an episode depends on the ur and its cash reserves. Household agents are also like herder agents in that their routine water use from the canals is minimal. So it's accounted for but not charged. But occasionally households can draw huge amounts of water, for example for construction purposes, which in turn affects water availability in the system. In reality, an irrigation scheme and a water user association's primary role is to serve agricultural needs. However, when additional uses such as the ones we have described here occurs, it causes stresses in the system in terms of resource shortage, infrastructure damage and crop loss. To this end, one of the recommendations in the literature is to allow owners to allow non-farmers to also become members of their water user association so the water use can be regulated. This is one of the owner management angles we are keen to explore using watering. The overarching purpose of our work is to understand how wells can perform better. What watering provides is a tool to answer that question by exploring under what model settings and assumptions can wells perform better in terms of using water efficiently, minimizing yield loss for farmers and reducing conflicts between different types of water uses. This type of analysis is expensive if not impossible to do in the real world settings. Furthermore, since we have used a bottom-up modeling approach in watering, we can provide causal explanations of how each factor we have modeled specifically affects the outcomes. We have just completed developing the full watering prototype complete with all five sub-models. Our next step is to implement specific scenarios, run simulations, and analyze the outputs for patterns and trends. Nevertheless, I wanted to show a sample output to demonstrate how the model helps us unpack complex relationships. The output seen here shows that the water sharing policy followed by UA can impact farmers income by affecting their yields. The upstream downstream divide is equivalent to upstream users getting priority over downstream users for water allocation. Or in other words, upstream users seldom suffer water shortage whereas downstream users face more water shortage and therefore experience crop loss and income loss the equity scheme is equal to all farmers receiving equal allocation of water or in other words if there is a water shortage and a large area is under cultivation all farmers share the stress and thus suffer crop loss and income loss Consequently, the mean income of farmers is lower in the equity scheme than the upstream downstream divide scheme. The relationship between US water allocation policy and farmers income conveys only one part of the story. What we also noticed was that staggered planting does not have a significant impact on the income of farmers. But this might be because how staggered planting is currently implemented in the model where farmers along the same secondary canal do not follow the same cropping schedule but if they did and staggered planting was enabled across the scheme then in the event of a water shortage prioritizing the lateral where crops are in the flowering stage over other laterals might minimize yield loss while still maintaining equity of water access on the other hand In some schemes staggered planting is entirely avoided for the difficulties it poses for water allocation such as in the VS scheme in which case the pattern we see here might hold true so we would have to consider other strategies of minimizing yield loss while still maintaining equity of access this is just one example of how the model can be used to think about plan implement and communicate about our roles and functions within an irrigation scheme Now that our prototype with all submodels is in place, we have started exploring different scenarios for implementation. The watering model was developed with inputs from several UA experts whom we interviewed throughout the project, as well as with inputs from our Future Dams consortium partners and Ghana case study partners. Our next step in terms of publication is an article describing the model, which we hope to publish in the Journal of Artificial Societies and Simulation. co-authored together with our future dams colleagues who provided inputs to the model after that we are keen to explore any test cases that colleagues who provided inputs might want to try for example to explore decentralized water management in the pelugu context or to explore the effect of climate shocks on end user communities we are also thinking of running a participatory workshop in ghana involving stakeholders to evaluate the model 
We are still in the early phase of planning this workshop. If you would like to be involved with it, please drop me a line and I will follow up. Lastly, we are keen to explore ways of extending watering and now is a great time to be involved with our test cases or try out new test cases. Please just write to me if this is of interest to you and I will be happy to follow up. Please also write to me if you or your colleagues are interested in just trying out the model. As it may have been evident from the presentation, we have used an intuitive representation for the irrigation scheme, its features and the word dynamics. Hopefully, this would make the learning process easy for anyone interested in using the model. After the completion of development and testing, we hope to make watering available for free and open source through relevant channels. But if you would like to try it out in the meantime, please just write to me. Thank you very much for your attention.